are welcoming Maya Zahira, who is a spiritual teacher. She's had a whole host of, of negative experiences and challenges and has emerged as this incredible uh, light and, and uh, uh, educator to help people cope with this stuff. She has a website. It is uh, www.psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. She is author of her newest book, Darkness Disguised as Light, The Hidden Truth About Psychic Protection and the Illusion Matrix, which is available on Amazon. And you can find her Facebook group. Look for Psychic Protection Sanctuary as well as YouTube channels. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Portal Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for joining us, and special thank you goes out to all of you who continue to support the podcast and continue to spread the word. Always remember, if any of you out there have experiences of your own that you'd like to share, feel free to email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. Again, paranormalportalradio at gmail.com, and you too could be a guest on the show. Welcome to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. Welcome, Maya. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Brent, for having me as a guest. I love your show. I've been listening for a couple of years, ever since I found it. And I want to say hi to all of the listeners as well. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you're most welcome. And thank you uh, for you know reaching out and getting in touch with me out. I'm really excited about this, not only because you are an experiencer, but you have made it your scope of in your life's work to help people in these situations. And I think that that is an incredibly wonderful transformation of a very negative experience into a very positive thing for a number of people. So uh, it really, really is an amazing uh, transformation. And, and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you here because uh, you, you really have been through the ringer in your past and, and have seen and experienced some some of the darkest stuff out there, really. And uh, how did this all start? What was going on? Absolutely. So today I'm really looking forward to sharing a lot of my personal story with everyone here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want to forget. I want to just touch on something really quick. Sure. So that the listeners know. So my, uh, Brent, thank you for announcing my first book, Darkness Disguised as Light. My second book just came out um, at the beginning of this year, and it's called The Psychic Attack Source Book, Understanding and Surviving the Unimaginable. And that book is a powerhouse. Both books are good. The first book is about part of my personal story. Mm -hmm. The Psychic Attack Source book is what you need if you are experiencing unwanted paranormal activity. It is your handbook, what to do, and also how to understand what the heck is happening. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah, I'd love to yeah. read that myself. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, so um, let's get into some story what I wanted to start with is to give some clarity here, just give some context, because I know we all experience the world differently. So as I share these stories with you, the way that I've always experienced the world since I was young and now still as an adult is through my intuitive abilities. I believe everyone's intuitive um, I just happened to be a little more tuned in. And so ever since childhood, I've had visions, knowings, premonitions, strong intuition, various psychic experiences. And I literally use my intuition for everything. Like it's how I interpret the world. I literally choose what our insurance I'm going to pick, you know, when, like which one's going to be best. 
I use my intuition. So it's literally a part of my practical life. And it's also how I interpret my reality. So I wanted to just be clear about that. I'm I'm an open-minded skeptic and open-minded questioner. Mm-hmm. And I encourage everybody when they, they hear my story to run it through your own filter and and just feel into what you think about it. And with all of that said, I want to um, just clarify that as I go through my story, I'm going to be really clear. I'm going to try to be really clear about which aspects were happening in the physical reality and which information was coming through intuitively, perhaps through a dream or a vision so that you can interpret my story. Okay. So, um, I've had some really intense experiences since childhood, but I'm going to start with something more recently, and that is with the death of my biological grandmother, God rest her soul. She passed away a few months ago, and this is the first time that I'm sharing this part of my story, by the way, because it's very personal. Sure. It was um, in August. And um, this is my biological grandmother, and I specify biological because I was adopted when I was a, when I was an infant. And there are some aspects of my relationship with that aspect of my biological family that I've um, discovered recently. So this very weird stuff happened on the day that she passed away. And um, I did not know, I I didn't receive the notification that she had died until later uh, in the day, it was like 4.30 p.m. So it was early in the morning, I was outside, uh, I live out in nature, I was sitting out back, I was doing my morning meditation, which is with my eyes open, just looking at nature and just sitting there and processing stuff and all of a sudden I heard this like loud rattling noise now I do live in the southwest I live in um, southeast Arizona in the desert so there are rattlesnakes here but this was the first one the first rattlesnake encounter that I had had and that I've had since the only time that I've encountered rattlesnakes out here so I'm sitting there and I hear this loud rattling sound and I, I, at first I'm looking like, what is that sound? Where is it coming from? What's happening? And I look and I see there are two rattlesnakes standing up vertically intertwined. So they're wound around each other. They're not laying down on the ground. They're standing up. And I'm standing on the porch. So I'm, I'm enough away from where they're at that I'm safe. But I see these snakes and I'm thinking, oh, my God, like, what is happening? And um, I later found out that they were probably mating. And as soon as I looked over and I realized what was happening, they started to unwind. And then one of them slithered uh, to underneath my house and the other one went into a bush. Um, I didn't walk through my yard for a few weeks after that. I was really nervous. At the time when that happened, I thought, wow, that was like really wild. Like, I, like I just thought it was an interesting aspect of wildlife. But in hindsight, I realized as I described some of the other things that started to happen, that it was all part of the energy of my grandmother's passing. So late later that day, oh, and by the way, I got a video of the snakes. I I got a video of the last part when they were unwinding. So it actually did happen. It was not my imagination. Sure. So then later I got the notification that she had passed. She and I had a difficult relationship. It wasn't an easy relationship, um, but I'm I'm a compassionate person and I felt bad about her passing. Um, later at night, I was sitting here at my desk, just finishing up my work, and I kept hearing this skittering noise. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I have another mouse. I mean, I do live out out in the country. And so I figured it was a mouse. 
about an hour later, I get up to close down for the evening and I happen to see the wall behind me. There's a scorpion on the wall and I freak out. I'm like, oh my God, that thing has been right behind me this whole time. I mean, as I was hearing all this skittering for the last hour, it was the right vibe. It could have like jumped on me. And so I killed it. Um, I have this like walking stick that I, I pulled it, I grounded and I squashed the scorpion. And then I went to bed like, oh my gosh, I, things are feeling really weird. Like usually the energy in my home feels great, but it's feeling really creepy in my house. So the middle of the night, I wake up to use the restroom and I go into the bathroom and I turn on the light and I happen to look up and there's a scorpion on the ceiling. Oh, no. And I'm like, oh my God. And I have not had scorpions uh, since this period, by the way. So it's not like I live in a house. I do live out in the country, but let's just use our analytical mind here. I have not had any of these experiences since. Um, so I grabbed that walking stick and I was like screaming as I was like trying to poke it. And I still didn't want to recognize, though, that it was related to the passing of a family member because I didn't want to think, I didn't want to believe that someone would basically send drive-by slime energy my way as they were on their way exiting. I didn't want to believe that. But anyway, long story short, over the next three weeks, my house was filled with spiders that were the size of my hand and scorpions. Um, I didn't see any more snakes. And here we'll, we'll get into the intuitive realm here. And in my bedroom every night, I was seeing astral spiders with my psychic vision. So I was seeing spiders in the astral. So literal physical spiders. And I, and I, I, they were real. It was not a, an imagination. Like I had to sweep up their remains and throw them in the trash. But then I was also seeing things in the astral and like my whole house got took over, taken over by this like weird energy, which was very unusual. Cause again, within my line of work every day, I'm doing cleansing. Like I'm keeping the energy of my home and myself pristine. So like literally everything got slimed and it took me a good couple of weeks to get everything cleared out. And it also took me over a week to really recognize that, okay, this came from her. Like she slimed me on her way out. And I don't think we ever want to believe that someone would do something like that. And I don't think that she's an evil person. I don't think that she's a bad person. I think sometimes people do things because they have unresolved whatever thoughts or emotions within themselves or confusion. And so they projected and I, so I forgive her. Uh, but there was something else that happened um, intuitively during that time. I also started to have visions, um, intuitive visions where I started to see what really happened before my own birth and what happened with the circumstances of me being put up for adoption. So, so those of me who are skeptics, this part came through intuitively. So no one told me most of this, that this came through visions. Okay. Now, uh, there was some information that was told to me by family members, and that would be that uh, a year or two before my conception, uh, one of my uncles who is deceased, he was a teenager at that time. And the rest of the family had told me that something really weird happened to him, that it was like something really dark and evil took him over and his behavior changed. He became like a completely different person the the younger kids in the family, um, my aunts and uncles, um, they were afraid of him. 
and eventually he committed suicide. He took his own life, which is tragic. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to um, make light of any of that. That's very tragic what happened to him. Sure. What I saw in my visions about my grandmother, I saw a flash. Again, this was last August when I had these visions. I had this flash where I saw her after his tragic death. And this was months after his death. Um, and it was at the time when my birth mother found out that she was pregnant. And it was a big upheaval in the family because she wasn't married. And back in that era, that was so shameful. And it was a Catholic family. And, and I saw this vision of my grandmother... And I saw a demon appear um, in her presence. And it actually said to her, if you give this baby to us, the demonic realm, the rest of your family will remain safe. This tragedy that happened won't happen to anyone else in the family. You can hear? Hear? Listen. Listen hard and tell me what you can hear right now. Nothing very much. The wind? Cricket? (laughs) Cricket and the wind. Do you know what I can hear? I can hear the grass growing, the sap rising in the trees. I can hear the stars moving in their courses. I can hear things that no man ever heard before. Now, just emphasizing, this came through a vision, Mm -hmm. and I saw that, and I thought, oh, my God, it all makes sense. Like, it all made sense to me because of just just a lot of factors that are are too much to go into. Sure. Um, So I see this, and I felt just so sad. Not for me right now, but for my infant self. I felt, I started to cry. I felt so sad for that poor, innocent baby. Like I was literally the sacrificial lamb for that family. And um, so then, um, so I was born in in October, -October. (laughs) mid-October. And... A few months later, I was adopted into another Catholic family. So I was put up for adoption. And that cat, that family, um, the, another vision that I had was that that family, it was, it was all planned out that I would be adopted into that family because of that, that, uh, promising me to the demonic realm. That particular family was chosen, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Sure. Um, so the, the I was adopted into this family with my mom and dad, my adopted mom and dad, and four other siblings, and I was the youngest. I was not the first to be adopted. They had adopted two other children before me, and um, there were a lot of crazy things going on as I was growing up. But I think a lot of people can relate to this, that when you're growing up in a really, whether it's a dysfunctional household or there's weird spiritual stuff going on, as a kid, you just don't know that that's not normal. Like nobody has told you that that's not normal. So I grew up with a mother who would be acting normal one moment And then all of a sudden, her eyes would change. Her pupils would dilate to the most unimaginable pinpoints. 
her voice would change to a man's voice and just this low growling voice. And she would start talking about how she wanted to kill herself. And uh, she would start growling about how she wanted to kill herself and other people. And I have a very vivid memory of this when I was in high school and I was sitting at the kitchen table with her and there, it was just me and her. She was, I was talking to her about my day at school, at high school. I was 16 years old and she was in the middle of a sentence and all of a sudden something took her over and she, like her face changed, her eyes changed, um, And here's the thing is nobody stepped in and said, your mother is demonically possessed. Right. Like no one said that. My, my dad always was the enabler like, oh, you must've done something to upset your mother. Otherwise she wouldn't be acting this way. But people don't act that way. Their eyes don't change. Their voice doesn't change like that. And honestly, I was so um indoctrinated into that being normal Mm -hmm. that it wasn't until midway through my adulthood that i had this epiphany that oh my god she was possessed like it seems weird but i'm sure that there are listeners who will relate to this that once you've had (laughs) some really outlandish experiences and you don't have a, as a kid or as a teenager, you don't have a framework for how to understand it. And then as an adult, suddenly it clicks and you go, oh my God, how did I not know that? Right. Wow. That's frightening. Yeah. yeah. So that's the environment that I grew up in. And it was scary. Um, and when I was in... When I was a child and into adolescence, I was having, as I mentioned before, I was having visions. I was having spiritual visions, um, downloads, and um, premonition dreams. When I was an adolescent, that's when those experiences really ramped up, and uh, I think I was a preteen when the first really big thing happened. I was riding my bike with my best friend at the time. And I lived in Southern California and we were riding through the neighborhoods. And, and then at the end of the neighborhood was this shopping center and a parking lot. So we were riding behind the shops. And all of a sudden, I felt this chill down my spine it was so strong that I suddenly put my feet down I was pedaling my back I said I was pedaling my bike I suddenly put my feet down on the ground and stopped because this feeling was so powerful and I looked to my left and I was right behind the mortuary no no <laughs> And I saw with my, so, so this wasn't like a, a vision state where I go into this altered state. I was just there on my bike and I looked over and there was an old man who was see-through. So he was transparent and he was standing there on the stoop. It was like this back stoop, and then there were three steps down to the parking lot. He was standing on the stoop, and he was looking from side to side with this this, this expression that I would describe as, where am I, facial expression. Now, he did not, uh, um, he didn't see me, so we didn't have like an eyes meeting kind of thing. He was looking from side to side, like, where am I? And then my friend, who was the boss of that relationship, she had ridden further ahead and she looked back and said, what are you doing? Hurry up, get over here. And so I was like, oh my God, that was crazy. And so I I paddled up to where she was. I told her what happened and she didn't believe me. She thought I was totally lying and I was not. 
Uh, it was like that actually happened. Um, and then in uh, my my adolescence, things really ramped up even more with really positive uh, spiritual visions, but also some negative ones. That's where I really started to have some negative activity. And I'll share one of those stories with you right now. Sure. Um, I woke up one morning. So I was a teenager. I don't know exactly what age. I woke up. Um, the, the room was light because it was morning. It was not the middle of the night. My alarm had gone off. And I opened my eyes. And I saw a young man, like my age, standing next to my bed. And he had like face paint on. It looked like c- kind of like kiss fa- face paint. I have no issue with sure. with kiss, by the way. <laughs> but it was like kiss um, face paint kind of stuff. And he stood there and he said, Satan is my savior. Oh, no. And I was like, and then, and then I closed my eyes because I was like, oh, my God, what is this? And then I opened them again, and he was gone. Okay. Now, I know that I wasn't asleep. I was awake. I'm very certain of that. I was not dreaming. And I'm like, what the heck was that? Um, now, as life went on, I had this feeling throughout my whole life that that young man, now, now this is just a feeling and not any... I don't have any proof of this, sure. but that that young man had been placed with me. I think it was a, a, a lost soul, a human soul, okay, that he had been placed with me kind of like we have guardian angels, like beneficial mm-hmm. guardian angels. And remember that possibly I was promised to the demonic forces as an infant, Again, I can't prove that, but I believe it. I I believe it. Mm-hmm. The visions that I had were so profound. And that if that's true, it makes sense that I had uh, demonic beings or those working for the demonic realm watching over me mm-hmm. in a negative sense. Um, and so I always felt like that was that he was with me. And here's something else weird is that after my grandmother passed away um, and after I got the text message that she had passed, I went outside in the evening uh, to do another meditation. And when I was in meditation the day that she passed, I saw this energy, this like energy cord above my head connected to my crown chakra. And it had been connected to that um, negative guardian. So it was this cord connected to that guardian and it all dissolved. And I thought, oh my gosh. So her passing allowed that connection to dissolve. So she was the one that was keeping it in place. That was my feeling about that. Wow. Thank God. Yeah. Oh. I mean it's it's horrible to say maybe but you know if that if that indeed was what what the uh, agreement was and it was contingent upon her still being here then I guess it was a great a great thing that she did pass and that was dissipated and you were released. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. And as far as she's concerned um I I do forgive her. If if that is indeed what what really happened, I I do forgive her. Um, I'm not happy with what happened. Um, I'm not happy with any of that, and I no longer have contact with that that family. But I forgive her. I I understand that somebody must have been really that, that she must have been very very afraid to have made an agreement like that. Yeah. So I I understand. I think I understand. Mm-hmm. I don't agree with it. I think it's horrible. Right. And I'm angry 
but I also forgive her. Oh, um, that's that's incredible, and I think I think that that's that's also empowering. Is that you're not going to allow that to still be a chain on your soul, so to speak, and you know, like that it would bind you in that negativity in any way. So releasing it is is incredibly empowering. Yes, indeed. Big deep breath. <laughs> That's so are you ready to hear about the haunted farmhouse? Oh, by all means, please. Okay. And feel free to ask any questions as I go. I'm trying to just move through because we have so many stories. Oh, yeah. So when I was in my 20s, I uh, lived in a a farmhouse with an elderly woman. I was renting the upstairs of her house, and then I was also helping her out during the day. And I was in, um, it was in, I forget what what part of Can, uh, it was in Kansas, out out in the country. And um, so shortly after I moved in, I started to have really weird experiences. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing was that I was spending a lot of time upstairs. Uh, so I was like just in this one room, my, my, my bedroom, and I would um, be just sitting there talking on the phone or doing whatever I was doing. And I would see a spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw various different spirits that were all in pioneer clothing oh wow and and this one that i saw was holding a babe holding an infant baby and now i had had enough spiritual types of encounters throughout my life by that time that that didn't freak me out i just was like oh uh, like there there are spirits roaming this prairie you know from long ago um it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But then things started to turn really dark. So this is this is a, a real scary part. If there's anybody who doesn't want to hear real scary stuff, <laughs> but why would you be listening to Brent's channel? <laughs> you don't want to hear scary stuff. Right. So the I, f I first realized there was something really dark in that house when I woke up in the middle of the night. And I'm 100% sure I was awake. I was not dreaming. I was laying on my back. I opened my eyes and there was a dark shadow entity, something over me. Oh, wow. And it was like pressing down on me and I could not move. I was paralyzed. I'm sure a lot of listeners have had the sleep paralysis thing. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified. And then the weird thing is that the next thing I knew, it was morning and I was lying on my side and I opened my eyes. And the first thing that I thought of was what, ha what had happened in the middle of the night. I opened my eyes and I thought, oh my gosh, did that really happen? Yeah. And I didn't want to believe that it really happened. I thought, did that really happen? Like I just had this sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I absolutely know that it happened. But you know how when something bad happens or something unexpected happens, part of our brain doesn't want to believe it. So I got up, took a shower, went to work, and tried not to think about it. And then, um, so I, I just thought, oh, hopefully, hopefully everything's fine. Well, then a couple of days later, I was sitting on the edge of the bed. I had just hung up from talking to somebody on the phone. You know, the old phones that we used to have, I had to hang it up on the receiver. <laughs> and I was, so I was no longer on the phone. It was just me and there was no one else there. And I heard this voice and it was a, 
disembodied voice, and it was as though the person was speaking right into my ear. It was not far away. And at that time, I was going by what is now my middle name, which is Jane. Okay. And I heard this male voice that said this into my ear. Oh, no. Oof. It, like, spread out the vowel. I mean, it just was the creepiest thing ever. And I sat there and I went, okay, I really have a problem. This is a problem. I finally snapped out of being in denial and recognized, okay, there is something happening. Like, I know I did not imagine that. <clears throat> and so back then in my 20s, and I'm 50 now, back then I did not know how to clear yeah. a, like an entity or anything like that. There was a gal that I had been going to for energy sessions out there. And I went to her and I said, there's a really dark entity in my house. What do I do? And she was like, well, you should burn sage. By the way, that's what everybody says. <laughs> and a lot of people can probably relate that when you're dealing with something super dark, sage is is not, it's usually not enough. You usually need something a lot stronger than that. So, of course, I tried to burn sage. It didn't work. Yeah. Okay. But I was able to establish at least a partial solution until I was able to move out. And it was a creative solution because, again, I didn't have anyone, like the person who was supposed to know didn't know how to advise me, and I didn't have anyone else that I could go to at the time. Mm. And so I was like, how do I get rid of this thing so it's not messing with me while I sleep, so it's not attacking me? And so this one day I was standing there, and I had this creative idea, and it was to imagine that I was a mountain lion, which is actually native to that area around there, by the way, to imagine, to take on the spirit of the mountain lion and to just, like, take on that that ferocious nature. Because I think as human beings, we believe that the entity is stronger than us. And so we cower and we go, oh my gosh, I'm so scared that thing's going to hurt me. Right. Well, for some reason, I was able to just click into the embodiment of this kind of energy. Mm -hmm. And I was able to up-level my personal power. And um, I, in that moment, I had a sense, I didn't see it or hear it, but I had a sense that that really dark entity was in the hallway so i imagined like me doing the fiercest growl and telling that and telling it to get out <laughs> good for you and so the partial solution was that um i was able to get it to move up into the attic oh nice so yeah so i was not able to get it to move totally out of the house I also had a sense that, that that really dark, dark, dark entity was uh, actually not a demon. It was a human soul that had gone so dark that it didn't even look human anymore. It just looked black, yeah. this blackness. Mm -hmm. And I also had a sense that it had uh, entrapped those other spirits that I had been seeing and that they, they couldn't leave the house. Right. There was this entrapment thing going on. Sure. At the time, I didn't have the knowledge or the know-how or even realize that I could help, possibly help free those souls. I didn't know about that back then. Sure. Um, but I was able to free myself and I eventually moved away from that place. But one thing that I didn't mention is that after that very first attack, I um, I became sick. I developed some medical issues 
Oh, no. <laughs> and I remained sick for several years after that. And I do believe that it was a result of literally that entity, that dark, such a low vibration energy um, engaging with my physical body, right? So it it had an effect, mm -hmm. a very real effect. That seems to come up quite a bit too in this stuff. That uh, if you're if you are in presence of a dark energy or a field of dark energy, it will have ramifications on your health. And and just for those of you out there that may be like, well, what really? How can that work? Just think about living the the ramifications of living living in close proximity to power lines, and uh, that EM can can raise havoc and and uh, you know in the form of of tumors and and all kinds of strange and negative health issues. So I I think that that stands to reason, and it comes up an awful lot that people in dark negative places will end up manifesting that somehow just by uh, constant exposure. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, yeah. And and it makes perfect sense to me that, you know, the, the energy around you has a real effect on you. Yes. Whether it's positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So I survived that. And then in my late 20s, I went on to, um, I, I left my, quote, day job. Mm -hmm. I became self-employed and mm -hmm. I was um, doing a lot of um, spiritual work mm -hmm. and empowerment work. Um, now, from this perspective, I look back and I describe myself as a feel-good spiritual practitioner and we need the feel good spiritual practitioners because this world is hard. We we need those those pe the, those um, people doing that work. Mm -hmm. Um, but also, like I was was doing all the like fluffy stuff, mm -hmm. and I didn't really want to recognize any of the dark stuff. Oh. And so I went went for several years, like a couple of decades really a couple decades doing that kind of work, um, teaching Reiki classes, putting on retreats, um, energy work and, and all of that until in 2016, I went through the most horrific and life threatening psychic attack that I could ever imagine. And it was so bad that I, um, I thought that that entity was going to kill me. Mm. And what had happened? This is just a very short synops synopsis of it, but I do go through this whole story because it's very multi layered mm -hmm. in my book, Darkness Disguised as Light. So, in a nutshell, I went to a one on one session with a spiritual colleague. I went to her for a session to get a second opinion on some stuff. And as a result of connecting with that spiritual teacher, I came under terrible attack. Mm -hmm. Now, this is someone who says, and she possibly believes that she works with a council of angels and there are many uh, spiritual workers out there who are working with angels. I have no issue with angels. Mm -hmm. I love angels, actually. I've got one behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But what it turned out was this council of angels were not angels at all. Oh. It was actually one entity. It was a djinn that was shape-shifting and fooling her and a whole lot of people and what happened for some reason when i got in contact with her that thing attacked me I'm 
now you've come to kill me. Yes, Oliver, I've come to kill you. But you can't do that. You can't just pull on. Yes, Oliver, I can. And I have to. No, please don't struggle like that. I'm stronger than you are. You can't get away from me. That noise. Hear it? Your heart. Beating, pounding, driving the blood through your veins. Beating more slowly now. Slower and fainter. Running down like a tired clock. I'm not going to let you go until it's stopped. So don't struggle. Don't struggle, please. Just a few seconds more. I can hardly hear it now. Robbing murmur. And now, even that's gone. Yes, it stopped. And you're dead. When other people were interacting with her, it was pretend it was doing its shape shifting thing and pretending to be angels. So for some reason, it was very threatened by me. And and the thing was, was it took me a good three weeks to figure out what was going on. Because again, I didn't want to believe right. that this was coming from that person who is like, this person is a lovely woman. Like, she seems lovely. Mm -hmm. Why would this be coming from her? And... At that time in 2016, honestly, I had no idea even what a gin was. Mm -hmm. But since then, I've had numerous encounters with them, and I know all about them. But back then, I did not have any framework to understand what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, so some indications that I was under attack included lights flashing that didn't used to flash. All of a sudden, the lights are flashing. And I was having episodes of missing time. So it would be... Uh, so this one day, I woke up, and it was, um, it was sunny. It was kind of hot. And I went to the bathroom, and I went back to bed, and, and it was morning. Okay, and, and then I, I went to the bathroom. I went back to bed. I woke up and it was 4 p.m. and it was dark and it was raining. And I was like, where did I go? What the heck happened? I've never slept till 4 p.m. I don't know what happened. Um, and then wildlife was acting really weird. Mm -hmm. I would go out into my backyard and bird, these birds were, were swooping down right over my head and squawking. Uh, making weird noises. Now, some of these things we could explain away. We could be like, well, maybe it was just some weird thing. But then there was a certain point where I figured out that it was coming from her. And I figured out, now I didn't know for sure that it was the gin yet, but I figured out, oh my gosh, this actually like is coming from whatever entity is connecting with her. And so I tried to warn one of her students. I texted her and I said, I think you need to be really careful. I think we should talk soon. Uh, there are some things that I want to talk to you about. And, um, and so I sent her this warning. And then uh, that night I went to bed and I woke up in the middle of the night and again, I'm 1,000% sure I was awake. I was not dreaming. Okay. I was on my back. I was laying on my back. I opened my eyes. The reason why I woke up was because something had jarred my physical body. And when I opened, my eyes flew open and I saw this entity that was like it looked like electricity it was like plasma okay which is what gin are made of by the way they're made of plasma 
and it was this plasma energy pulsating and from this energy part of it reached down like into my shoulder into my body and tried to yank my soul out of my body oh geez and i can't even tell this story in a way that describes how that that instant was the most terrifying moment of my entire life and afterwards um, now it did not succeed in pulling my soul out of my body mm -hmm. but then in the next moment i received a telepathic message now if anyone listening to this has ever experienced real telepathy not just a thought in your in your like your own thoughts in your mind but some something or someone else's voice booming inside your head it's a very distinct experience and i heard this being's voice it sounded like a male voice it boomed this booming loud voice inside my skull and it said don't mess with her. She's mine. Oh, no. Wow. And I could feel the energy of... The, I could feel the energy coming from this being. It was wrath. That is the emotion. It was just emanating wrath. Not anything else. Just wrathful energy toward me. And then... I saw it expand into this, like, um, so, so it went from being this indistinct energy form to where each side of it expanded so that it looked like it sort of had wings, like an angel. And I, I turned onto my side like in a protective kind of motion with my arms over my head mm -hmm. turned onto my side and I was hyperventilating and sobbing and I stayed in that position until dawn I think it was two or three hours sobbing and I was terrified because I still didn't understand I was trying to figure out was that an angel? Do angels attack people? What the heck was that? And it, it it literally took me having a couple of other gin encounters later on in the future, which we'll talk about another time, mm -hmm. that helped me 100% validate and compare the patterns and to know with absolute certainty that absolutely was a gin because I could compare and know through various other experiences, which I'm grateful that I had those other experiences because it helped me truly validate because I went through a couple of years after that not being completely sure. Right. Like, yeah. what exactly was that? And now I can say years later, I'm 100% sure. I know exactly what they, what, what gin ent entities look like, feel like, sound like, how they operate, and I know what their patterns are. Mm -hmm. um, that was a very difficult entity to get rid of. It took me a few weeks, mm -hmm. and I will caution everyone. I will say that in my experience, gin are exceedingly dangerous, and if we go in with a fiery, provocative kind of clearing technique, they usually lash back mm -hmm. really hard. In other words, they might murder your pets. They might cause harm to you. I mean, they, they are psychopaths. Yeah. They are psychopathic. They do not respond well to strong boundary setting. So there are creative ways that I have figured out, which maybe we can talk about in another sure. um, interview. Yeah. But um, I was eventually able to get rid of that entity. 
And I do explain that process in, in my book, Darkness Disguised as Light. I'd like to give your listeners one really important tip that, that can give them relief for pretty much any kind of entity. Yes, please. Does that sound good? That's okay. wonderful. Let me get a quick drink. Yeah. So most of you have probably heard of this. It's uh, frankincense resin. And there's a reason why, in my opinion, there's a reason why the Catholic Church had a long history of using frankincense uh, for exorcisms and even in uh, some of their masses. I don't think they typically use it anymore. They probably should. But what I've found through trial and error is that when you burn frankincense, not and, and I'm not talking about the synthetic incense sticks that, that smell nice. I mean actual frankincense resin. It's the, these little pebbles and you burn it. Thank you. He's holding up, holding some up. <laughs> you burn it on, on a charcoal disc. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go on um, YouTube and type in how to burn frankincense resin. Yeah. And there are like a thousand, two thousand videos that will tell you how to do that. Sure. So just burning some frankincense resin, not a tiny bit for the smell, for the lovely smell, but smoke up your house. Okay. Like really fill it up with that smoke. And most entities do not like it. And including gin, uh, demons, negative elementals, dark, uh, human souls, like really the whole gamut. Through, through trial and error, I've noticed that they will usually leave for anywhere between a day to three days. Oh. So it does not, it does not get rid of them usually permanently, unless it's an easy spirit. If it's an easy spirit, they, they might just leave because you've asked them to, right. or if you burn a little bit of sage and say a prayer or a blessing. Mm -hmm. But if you're dealing with something really nasty, the cool thing about frankincense is that you don't need any special esoteric knowledge. You don't need to know how to do any special incantations or anything like that. You can just burn the sage. And I, I call it a physical tool. So you've got your spiritual tools. You've got your physical tool. With a physical tool, you don't have to know anything. You can just burn it. And then when you start to see activity again, burn it again. Sure. And if you're under severe attack, you might have to burn frankincense in your bedroom right before you go to sleep every night just to help keep you safe. Mm -hmm. So that's that's like one of my number one, That actually that is the number one quick tip. Everybody wants a quick tip. <laughs> but we also need to remember that if you've been dealing with a really severe issue or you've been under attack for a long time, some frankincense isn't going to 100% resolve that issue. There there are a lot of other things that need to be done. We can talk about that another time too. Yeah. So what's... Uh, do you have any questions or anything you yeah. heard? Well, I just think it's interesting because in our Western society, we really don't hear things like gin mentioned much it's it's kind of considered you know historically speaking it's it's a, a described in the quran quite a bit in islam and such but it's it's i don't think most people are are very familiar with jinn as as an entity and such but uh just in a nutshell uh, according to the quran they were they were developed outside of the angels and outside of men uh, and it's interesting that you said that you you saw it as a ball of energy because one of the origins of the jinn is that they were forged from the blue flame, um, not mud and and soil like our bodies were or clay, and uh, they were very distinctly different than angels and therefore demons. So they are uh, a unique uh, presence that really isn't talked about much outside the Middle East, but it is something that can be present anywhere and, and everywhere, huh? 
Yes, I've uh, after my own experience with the gin, when I started working with clients with psychic protection issues, I had various different clients that were having gin issues that were in living in all different places throughout the world, mm-hmm. not just the Middle East. Yeah. And so um, we need to understand that this is a distinct entity. These are not, it's not a synonym for demons. A lot of people lump it all together. They are two different kinds of beings. Mm-hmm. And jinn don't just exist on in one part of the world. They're actually everywhere. And they're master shapeshifters. That's why it gets really tricky about them is that they they really like to plug into certain people who are in leadership roles so that they can shape shift into whatever sent master or angels or whatever and so then that that spiritual teacher um connects with their following and that entity gets to feed off of all of the 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 jinn loves to feed off of the energy of adoration. It loves to be adored. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, so uh, that that's that that's a very prevalent issue that I'm seeing mm-hmm. in the spiritual in spiritual communities is that they're they're getting hijacked. Is there is there any? How do I say this? Is there any methods by which a person can determine? what kind of presence they're dealing with, just the lay person, or does it take a uh, much more um, comprehensive investigation to really figure out what they're dealing with? Uh-huh. It's kind of somewhere in between. Okay. So there's not just an easy way that a lay person can just like go through this, these three steps and now they know what all the entities are. Sure. But what I would say is that you can learn about, so have the knowledge, develop the knowledge of how different entities behave Mm -hmm. and how they might show up. Okay. Um, I do have information about that in my recent book, The Psychic Attack Source Book. Okay. About some of the patterns of how they they show up, uh, some of the different entities. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure that information is out there in other ways as well. So if you, if you gain the knowledge of how they interact, like certain kinds of entities are going to be shapeshifters. Some are, uh, some entities might make the room cold or, or there might be a smell of sulfur or, or something rotting. That's an indication of certain kinds of entities, et cetera. Um, so. I think, and I was just talking, I just did a video on this the other day, that it's really important to know what it is that you're trying to clear instead of just trying to throw spaghetti at the wall and just like throw stuff like, oh, I've got some activity in my house. Let's try to clear it. Well, it's probably better to find out what you're trying to clear before you clear it because you could actually make it worse. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. So actually, I'm going to circle back and finish your question. So the first is the knowledge, to have the knowledge so you understand the patterns and the behaviors. Mm -hmm. But I also strongly recommend that people develop their intuitive Mm -hmm. abilities. And whether that is really um, learning how your gut feelings come through for you and learning how to trust that. Or even developing what what we might call our psychic abilities, mm-hmm. where you learn how to hone those different skills. That's one thing that I teach. You could also develop your skills in using a tool like a pendulum mm-hmm. to test yes and no. Am I dealing with this kind of entity? Yes or no. This other kind of ent- entity? Yes or no. Um, that is actually, the pendulum is a really straightforward tool that a lay person could learn how to use even without feeling like they're psychic if they could develop the ability to use a tool like that then they could test uh what what like they could go through the list of entities and test each one and and using a pendulum you could also test 
whether you have any, any portals in your space mm -hmm. and where they are. Because mm -hmm. if you clear out an entity, but there's just an open doorway where stuff is pouring through, you kind of need to take care of that too. Yeah, and that's a, that's a little bit different than, but I, I've heard of uh, uh, Reiki practitioners, uh, much like yourself, being very adept at shutting down portals and stuff. And and I, I imagine it's not exclusive to Reiki, but that's just a, a a really great methodology, I think, for having those closed. But um, yeah, if you if you push some out of your house, but you've got a a subway station where they can just come back in or other things come in. Yeah, it doesn't solve the problem. The other thing I wanted to address was I, I really appreciate that you hit on the frankincense. And uh, I think a lot of people are like, oh, you got something in your house, just sage. Well, sage, I think, generally speaking, is great for knocking down energy and for stabilizing energy, uh, just like in the smudging rituals of the First Nations and such. It's not really exercising or, or, or pushing away negativity. It's just basically cleansing yourself and cleansing your environment. I, I do think sage is really important uh, because just by virtue of living in a space, we are always uh, imprinting on it. And if, and if you're going through a time of trials or or, or struggles and such, your, your energy is going to be much more, I don't know, I don't want to say negative, but it's certainly not a, a peaceful kind of energy. And things like sage, I think, are very powerful for helping to flatline that and help to even out that atmosphere. But it's not a curative for negative hauntings per se. And so I really appreciate that you addressed that. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree. That's really cool. I, I really appreciate you taking all this time and 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 especially for the advice and, and uh, just walking us through your journey, um, there's no doubt that what you've experienced is probably both parts horrifying. But again, I just think it's so phenomenal that despite this time of lifetime of trials and, and, and obstacles that you've transformed it into something so positive and are able to utilize those experiences to help. And, and that to me is about the greatest gift of all is to take adversity and, and bring it into a, you know, into a healing and then into helping people understand their situations and helping them to resolve them. And, and because in the paranormal, uh, I mean, the one theme that is so consistent is that people, generally speaking, aren't asking for these experiences, but they can be absolutely crippling, uh, you know, no matter whether it's a, a cryptid or a spirit or a UFO or abductions or whatever. These things are, are incredibly intrusive events that reshape people and usually not in a real good way, at least in several. Um, the ramifications can be absolutely life-changing. So to know that you've been through everything that you have and that you've turned it into such a positive and into a helping and, and helping people reassemble themselves, I think is just so powerful. So thank you so much for sharing all of this. You're very welcome. And I feel called to just add this this um, to our story. And it's that when I was going through that period of gin attack mm -hmm. and I was in the thick of it, I was afraid to go to sleep. So I was very sleep deprived. And it was 2.30 in the morning one morning. And I thought, well, I better try to go to bed. And I went and sat on my bed and I, and I sobbed and I prayed for support and guidance and, and like somebody to help me or show me what to do. And then I got up and I went back to my computer and I looked online for like a support group or anything. And on that particular evening, I couldn't find anything. I didn't find anything except for fluffy stuff, like just just visualize white light. Yeah. Um, and so then I went back and I sat on my bed and I prayed some more and I, I just made a vow in that moment. I said to myself, you know what? If I'm going through this, I, I just know in my bones that I'm not the only person mm -hmm. having an experience like this. I know that there are other people out there experiencing these types of things 
And it is so horrible going through this alone. I don't want other people to have to go through this alone. And so if or when I get through this, I'm going to create a support group. And I did get through it. And I shortly after created my Facebook group, Psychic Protection Sanctuary, and it's been going, it's still a free group years later because I believe, and I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel too, Psychic Protection Sanctuary, because I don't want anybody to go through these things alone. The experience itself is, it can be highly traumatic. And then going through it alone or having your loved ones not believe you. And that is doubly traumatic. Right. It's just like, we need support. We need our, our support system. We need your channel, Brent. We need the people telling the story. So the people listening will know that they're not alone. Well, that's perfect. And, and it's funny because I was going to say, well, could you take a minute to let people know how to stay in touch with what you're doing? And you just named your Facebook and your YouTube, but but again, uh, Amazon for your books, is that correct? Yes, yes. So you can find both books. And um, they're on. They're in paperback, Kindle, hardback. I'm going to be working on Audible, oh. but you got to be patient. It, it takes time to do that. Yeah. It's a process. Well, I, yeah. It's just been absolutely wonderful to have a chance to meet you and... Uh, Thank you again for making the time to do this today, and and uh, I'll be really excited to have you back, and we can we can dive into this a little more, uh, especially about protection, because I know there's so many formats out there talking about the phenomena. My show is no different. Uh, we do discuss the phenomena quite a bit, but I think it's it would be very empowering to have uh, at least you know some some ideas of what people can do to mitigate these issues if they're having them, and and learn, you know, both how to handle it themselves and then, if not, where to look for more help. Uh, I think a lot of people in, in, and this isn't me bashing paranormal investigation. I do paranormal investigating as well. But a lot of times after paranormal investigators leave, the activities spiked and it, and it gets really intense for a period of time. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's more empowering to to help people learn how do you clear this? How do you how do you protect yourself? How do you protect your space? And uh, I really appreciate all of those insights. And and ladies and gentlemen, please check out Maya's books. Uh, they they just they're really timely and perfect. And uh, I know that they're they're extraordinarily well written. And I I'll be diving into them myself. Uh, I'm just really excited to read uh, more about what you're talking about, especially you know in in just I, I guess. We all have ideas of things to do for, for protection and, and such, but we can always learn from each other. And, and I'm really looking forward to what you're bringing to the table. And you've agreed to come back. So uh, that's even double. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, would I would love to. And Brent, can I add something? Please. <clears throat> so if there's anybody listening to this, watching this, who is really struggling and you feel like you need more like you need some mentorship uh, to help you go through step by step in how to get free of the struggle that you're going through. I do actually have a paid program. Oh, cool. I don't always mention it because uh, I do have a lot of free offerings. So if you can't do the paid program, there's a lot there. There's the YouTube channel, the Facebook group, but the the paid program is on my website, psychicprotectionsanctuary.com. So if you feel a calling to go that direction, then then head over there. You can look at what it's all about. Well, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure, Maya. Thank you so much for being here. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for all of your wonderful listeners as well. Get out. Right, guys thank you so much for joining us here on tonight's show i hope you guys enjoyed it please feel free to follow us on facebook facebook.com slash paranormal portal radio as well as finding us on twitter we're on twitter at paranormal portal p-o-r-t-l 
And uh, we'd love to have you stop by our YouTube page and subscribe and check out our shows there. we got hundreds of shows, Journeys into the Paranormal Portal. So I hope you'll check it, out. check it out, guys. We're over there at YouTube.com slash Paranormal Portal. So hope to see you guys soon. Uh, we'll be back, of course, for more podcasts in the coming days. So we love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can.